is the gut the new brain you know and <laughs> mm. i do go for like thai massages and they do all of this massages on my toes and they say they are actually massaging my gut yes uh, i don't remember the last time i had a completely stress free day i don't yes. think a stress free life even exists in this day and age <laughs> this is mind blowing for our parents they never imagined an age where doctors will be prescribing good bacteria for them <laughs> yeah yeah Welcome back to Gut Talk. Uh, I am Dr. Letaba Machaba, and today on set, I'm not alone. I'm actually joined by the famous master chef Kamani Partha. Kamani, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Hi, I'm uh, Kamani Partha. I'm the second season winner of Master Chef South Africa. I was also the host of a food travel show, uh, which was broadcast on Netflix. I was one of the chefs on Ready Steady Cook. I'm a long distance runner and a health coach and a generally hungry person. Wow. But oh, wow. um enough about me. I've been watching your gut talks. Yes. Why do we need to know about what makes a healthy gut? You know what, Kamani, we're seeing a lot of gut imbalance and symptoms related to that. We have clients and people coming to us talking about bloating, irregular bowel movements, discomforts, and not forgetting even emotional and low moods. Can you believe all of that is related to the gut? Henceforth, we've decided that as medical personnel, we actually need to go out there, come out of our comfort zones, come out of our hospitals, and actually talk about gut health, like in simple terms, simple terminology, and answer the questions that the public actually have towards us. I mean, you've yeah. got to give the people what they want, but yeah. How do people know that they need a probiotic? Like, what would they be feeling in their bodies? So when it comes to um, needing a probiotic, most of them actually don't come to us and say they think they need a probiotic. They just come to us with, you won't even believe, especially in children, we see things like mucus in the poo and lots of blood in the poo. And that is when we start saying to them to say, do you know that you actually need a probiotic? which is live microorganisms. And you should see the face on our parents. They will say to us, Doc, do you mean to say I need to have bacteria in my stomach? <laughs> and then I always say to them, yes, but not just any sort of bacteria, good bacteria that are well selected. Mm -hmm. And also very important, needs to be taken in a dosage form. And can I tell you, Kamani, this is mind blowing for our parents. They never imagined an age where doctors will be prescribing good bacteria for them. Yeah. yeah. It seems like a complete misnomer. Yeah. Good bacteria. Because I think a lot yeah. of people think that those are those things that lurk under the fridge somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So it's amazing that they can be helpful. So tell us more about this bacteria that's good. Because obviously you get bad bacteria, but yes. what makes a good bacteria truly good for you? So when it comes to gut health, there's a lot of topical information that we have actually been finding out as scientists. Uh, for example, like immune benefits. Mm -hmm. Did you know that 70% of our immune cells is actually found in the gut? Mm. And this I actually said in my previous video. But what's actually shocking to us and surprising to us as scientists is that even things like cognition mm -hmm. for adults and children and emotional. So when choosing a probiotic, you need to choose one that has actually been well studied well-researched, and that will actually also be able to survive in the gut. Because mm -hmm. if you are aware, I know you guys as chef talk about acids and stuff. I've seen some of your, your, oh, yes. your, your, your talks and your cooking shows. Even when it comes to health, our gut environment is so acidic and a good one needs to survive that harsh environment. Yeah. To, okay, forgive me, to okay, my lay yes. knowledge, uh -huh. bacteria, how does bacteria survive in acid? I thought acid was supposed to kill the bacteria. So some strains uh, of good bacteria do die from the acids. Mm -hmm. Henceforth, it is very important that when you're choosing a probiotic, it must survive and be viable and be resilient mm -hmm. to those stomach acids. So we love as doctors probiotics that are actually spores themselves. They, form, they are the spore themselves and that helps them survive. When you say the word spore, I feel like you need to feed it. Yes. So I'm thinking like in terms of how you can yes. prepare your body or just like aid the probiotic yes. to work better. I'm thinking you would eat things like more vegetables, loads of pulses. Yes, yes. Um, I've also read fermented foods are yes, a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
So we love all this healthy diet that mm-hmm. you mentioned, the good foods, because those are the prebiotics. Probiotics actually feed from prebiotics. They eat prebiotics. And you know what, Kamani, actually this probiotic thing dates far back, even in the late earlier centuries where Egyptians, uh, in their writing, the hieroglyphics, oh, wow. they actually documented like fermented food having health benefits. And also in the Tibetan age, where they also noticed that people who ate yak, they called it yak, but it's fermented yogurt, mm-hmm. actually lived longer than those who did not. Oh, wow. And henceforth, we want to collaborate with people like you <laughs> from the kitchen to say, how can we actually prep meals for our children, for our families to actually, do you have any recipes or advice for us to actually have this prebiotic food? I think if you eat healthily, like you eat the rainbow, so you eat a, something that's the color, that's the color of the rainbow. Yeah. And if you eat all of it, you'll be getting all of your nutrients. Yeah. And that's a lot of vegetables, which yeah. are good prebiotics. Yes. I also think people think that eating healthily is expensive and time consuming. But I think if you're eating whole food yes. that hasn't been processed yeah. and you plan a little bit because we're all busy, you have children, you, you've got to run, you've got to work, you've got to do loads of things in life. Yeah. Yeah. But if you pick one day a week and you decide to meal prep, prep your vegetables or meal prep for a couple of days, yeah. then you know that you have got food that you have cooked yeah. that is according to the right amount of salt that's going to be truly good for you yes, yeah, in your fridge yeah. the entire time. Ooh, getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you know what, uh, as well for us, when it comes to what you're saying, the prepping of the food, um, we do agree in prebiotics, mm-hmm. but what we also want to educate the people out there is that they need to know that supplementation is not a bad thing. We do try and consume as much healthy food as we can. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to certain supplementation, like probiotics, there is an actual strain that we actually uh, choose for each form of disease or or gut problems. Mm -hmm. And there's also actually a certain dosage, if I can use that word, or certain number of colony count Mm -hmm. that needs to be there for that nutrient uptake, you know, for mood stability and all of that. Yeah. It's the only good kind of colony you want in your life, I guess. Yes, even though we don't want to follow the trends. But <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Yeah, as I said, the colony count the colony count is important, but it's not everything. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think in modern life, you sort of get to the point where you need supplementation because stress levels are so much higher. Yes, yes, People yeah. are sleeping less. Yeah. You're exercising less. There's a lot more stuff. If you think about your grandparents, yeah, yeah. their lives were a lot simpler. They didn't have devices. Yeah. And those kind of things all impact the way that we live and by the sounds of things, yeah. all the microbiome and general bacteria in our bodies. Yeah. So it becomes so important to replenish, yes. but also just support that your, your entire body yes. reaches that balance and equilibrium on its own. Yes. Yeah. And then also one word I also like, Kamini, is restoration. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm happy you mentioned balance and also support. But restoration, and where does restoration come in is high levels of stress that mm-hmm. we're experiencing and medication. You know, uh, for example, us as doctors, we issue out too much antibiotics sometimes. And then what happens is when people are stressed or taking certain medication, there's disruption of the microbiome. And you know what happens is then they get all these ugly symptoms yeah. that I keep on mentioning. And then why we need probiotics, where we need probiotics is for that balance to be restored by just taking something. Yeah. It sounds a bit like we have to be realistic with ourselves. Yeah. I don't remember the last time I had a completely stress-free day. I don't yes. think a stress-free life even exists in this day and age. <laughs> and so I guess our bodies, who are still quite primal, if you will, yeah. Yeah. need a bit of help to, to just stay afloat yes, and keep yeah. things chilled. And what you were saying earlier is about when you have a healthy gut and microbiome, yes. the sort of other knock-on effects that it has like on mood. And yes. and I guess it's it becomes a more of a holistic conversation because when you become mindful of the fact that your gut needs help, then you adjust your food and then hopefully you'll be doing a bit of meditation and breath work and then yes. a bit of exercise and then we'll get to that zen place if we're yes. really lucky. Yes. But it's one of those like shoot for the stars or shoot yeah. for the moon and you'll land on a star because exactly. you might not get everything right entirely all the time, Yeah. but at least you're in that zone where you're aware that there could maybe be some things that you could do better. 
Yes, and henceforth, I don't know if you've heard come anywhere, people are saying that it's the gut, the new brain, you know, and <laughs> us in research now, I know even as uh, when I travel globally for congresses, people are saying, uh, talking about the gut brain axis, mm-hmm. gut liver axis, gut all of that axis. It just ties in exactly with what you're saying, mm-hmm. that the holistic approach now has changed where we're basing everything on DNA, now we realize that it all starts with the gut. And I know sometimes just adding, when I go for massages, Mm -hmm. I do go for like Thai massages and they do all of these massages on my toes and they say they're actually massaging my gut. So imagine by just taking something in the mouth, we are massaging the gut. (laughs) Yeah. I love that it sounds like a bit of a cheat sheet to like a, a better version of yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I think if I had to uh, sort of think about how I could best support my gut from the kitchen, Mm -hmm. I would look at uh, that sort of perfect plate scenario where half of it is vegetables. You've got a bit of starch and a bit of protein. Yes. But on the vegetable side, you would have all the colors of the rainbow. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I think that's such a beautiful image because you eat with your eyes and it inspires you to eat more. And I mean, even with kids, it means that they're they're looking at colors and it's a bit more interesting than just eating brown food. I like what you said about the rainbow colors Mm -hmm. because to liken this situation in a scientific sense is imagine that the gut is a garden (laughs) and in that garden we actually have flowers planted. Those flowers have different colors and that would be the food, the colored food that we eat and those are prebiotics. Then what we need to put in that garden is a bee that actually (laughs) pollinates the flowers and that is a probiotic like Bacillus clausi. Mm-hmm. So that's why, that's the illustration I use for all of my clients. Yeah. It's a very easy to understand uh, explanation because I think when when your patients come in and they're taking antibiotics, can can you give them Bacillus clausi at the same time or is it phased in? Or? Exciting for us, yes. We actually haven't had the luxury of doing that before. But with uh, Bacillus clausi, we can actually do that. And this actually is very important in that When they are eating, the prebiotics are there and it also helps survive the acidity of the stomach. So if you're on antibiotics, you're already sick, you're probably not tasting things so well. Yes. Can you take the probiotic with the antibiotic? And will you taste it? Because I'm a bit, yeah. You know what, we're actually so excited because before we were issuing issuing out probiotics that were taken differently. Mm With Bacillus clausi, you can actually take it with food. Oh, wow. And the feedback that I get from my clients or my patients, even the small children, they say that you can't taste it, it's odorless, and it's not offensive. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is music to my ears as a pediatrician uh, because for compliancy and also to get good results and actually retain my patients, (laughs) I want them to actually enjoy my treatment. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds incredibly child-friendly because I know children are quite sensitive to, is this, are Mm -hmm. are the foods touching? Does it taste weird? Can you put it in juice or anything else to make it a bit easier for the kids to get down? As pediatricians for um, compliancy, Mm -hmm. which meaning that the patient actually takes the full medication, we do advise a little bit of juice and sometimes even a little bit of yogurt. And I don't know any contraindications when it comes to that. That sounds delicious. Yes, yeah. I mean, yogurt is going back to those prebiotic foods, yes, yes. the old uh, good bacteria. I love that. Exactly. Especially now, Kamini, I don't know if you've um, if you've interacted this in your line of work where we're getting a lot of children coming in saying that they're eating brown food. <laughs> brown sounds very healthy, but actually when you check, they're eating brown fish fingers, uh, brown bread, brown everything, but actually there is no rainbow as you talk about. And that for us says that the child is not getting enough nutrition, you know, no nutrients, yeah. Uh, That, for me, is a terrifying thought, that a child would only be eating brown food. But I guess this is where it's the education of the parent as well to be able to say, this is what you need, and then hopefully that gets transferred to the child as well. Yes. And, you know, a question that I do get from my clients is when they go to a shop, they don't know to tell if this is a good probiotic or Mm -hmm. not. So what we always say to my clients um, is, especially if they're going to choose one for the kids, they must make sure that the strains are safe for the kids, number Mm -hmm. one. And then number two, it must be an evidence-based probiotic. And they must check as well how long has it been there in the shelf and also 
For example, all of these things that we're talking about, will it survive acidity, um, you know, the transportation of it? Mm -hmm. And I know they struggle sometimes to ask in store. And henceforth, I'm so excited that we're having this talk because they can actually reach out to us and to me and we can answer some of their questions. Yeah. I like that. Science yeah. first. But I also think once you are in store and you find a probiotic, it is mm -hmm. about finding something that your child is going to take every day or you're going to take every day. Because how long would you say it takes for your gut microbiome to get to a balanced place? I'm so happy you asked that <laughs> question. Because most people think that when I'm not feeling well or when I'm taking that antibiotic, that is when I actually should be taking the probiotic. Mm -hmm. But we know that the three key factors that I keep on mentioning about maintaining balance, restoration, and the last one, which is support, is very key. Mm -hmm. They, sometimes the, the long-term use of it, and you know, you can't say 10 days, you can't say one month. Some people need prolonged restoration, balance, and support of the gut to actually get the benefits. And for us as doctors, we always go clinical. Mm -hmm. um, I know that if you're still having irregular bowel movements, if you're still cramping and having discomfort, we haven't reached where we're supposed to go. So we take that feedback and you know that's how uh, we determine the duration of how you're supposed to take it. I think once you prescribe a probiotic and someone starts to feel better and notice that there is another way to feel instead yes. of just uncomfortable, yeah. then it will land for them that they need to either keep using it or just make the prebiotic-probiotic combination an everlasting solution in their lives. Yes, where we see like immediate benefits, if I can put it that way, is with antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever taken an antibiotic and felt that your stomach is a bit loose. Sadly, so, yes. Yeah, when we do that 10-day treatment with uh, our probiotic, especially if it's a spore forming like Bacillus clausi, mm -hmm. I must say clinically, there are studies and research that have shown symptoms to actually stop or prevent them. Hmm. Most of the time when you are giving the probiotic with that antibiotic, patients will say, wow, I never got any of those side effects. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> Kamini, this has been absolutely amazing. Once again, from the kitchen and the hospital, we have managed to cover so many important points when it comes to gut health and gut maintenance. And really, I've been excited to share what I have shared and really enjoyed uh, your pearls of wisdom. I, I mean, I like that we both come at it from different sort of angles. So gut health is important in the kitchen and it's yes. important at the hospital as well. Mm -hmm. But with food as a foundation, maybe we just need the supplementation to be able to help us through. So our powers combined. Yes. And then important that supplementation, that supplementation, which is the probiotic, must be sustainable, viable, and resilient. Till next time, uh, we shall continue our gut talks. And thanks again, Kamani, for joining us. Only a pleasure. Yes.